Just two best of threes remain in Group A. One of these players came all the way from the upper bracket, having just received the first match loss, and now stands one game away from the top 16. From Canada, join me in welcoming Alexander Hain. Alexander Hain, the Pro Tour Avacyn Restored Champion, who is running Mono Red and Esper Control. His opponent lost in the very first round and has currently had an undefeated run in the lower bracket once again. As the decider match, the winner advancing to the round of 16, the loser out. Join me in welcoming from the Czech Republic, Andre Strasky. Andre too will be running mono red and S for a very popular combination. This is one of the last two best of threes in match A. Who will make it out of group A and who will go home empty handed? Let's find out heading to the casters. Thank you so much, day nine. Again, we see an Esper mono red mirror match. Now, if the previous one was anything to go by, this could be over really, really quick, or it might take its time. What do you predict here, Paul? Well, again, it really comes down to how the matchups are paired. I think if we do see the, the Esper control mirrors go mm -hmm. kind of a little less uh, snowball-y, I want to say. Yeah. If, if both players have the appropriate hand disruption, the appropriate counter magic, Games can go very long. You know, I have certainly played Esper Control Mirrors where, yeah, it really comes down to decking. But at the same time, we've saw we've seen in previous games where, you know, one one deck can just you know snowball the game with cards like Search for Ascanta and and uncontested Teferi Hero Dominaria. So th those are the things that those players are looking for. At the same time, you could also just, you know, just see Esper Control going up against Mono Red, in which case, of course, the matches will end a lot quicker. All right, let's take a look at Haynes' Esper Control list. Now we'd had a look at this earlier again. Four to fairies in the main board. Oh, there is a sideboard, obviously, because of the uh, no. There's no sideboard for this one. Uh, Raska's contempt. We've got the negates. Search for his canter. So the typical Esper control package. Right. And then on Alexander Haynes. Oh, there is a sideboard there. Unmoored ego. Lyra Dawnbringer. So these sideboards do not look like the typical best of three sideboards. Right. Of course, this is a best of one tournament. So most players will not be submitting a sideboard. However. There's a unique quirk in that Mastermind's Acquisition is a card that allows you to put up to 15 cards in your sideboard, and when you cast Mastermind's Acquisition, you can dig into your sideboard and try to find the correct answer depending on the matchup. So as you can see, lots of very powerful effects here depending on what you're playing against. Cards like Unmoored Ego, very good against Wilderness Reclamation decks, Lyra Dawnbringer against Aggressive Strategy. So lots of uh, toolbox type cards here Definitely. for Alex Haynes to reach into if he does cast that Mastermind's acquisition. And here is Alex Haynes' mono red aggro list. Uh, pretty stock standard when it comes to the red deck. Yep. What is the, what's the ideal opening hand here for Alex if he is on the mono red in the first game? Yeah, so the ideal start for the mono red aggro deck is, you know, two to three lands. You want some creatures early because you do want to put some pressure on your opponent's life total with the creatures. And then ultimately you want to be able to end the game with burn spells to the opponent's face. Cards like Shock, Lightning Strike, Wizard's Lightning, and Skewer the Critics all help in doing that. Now, if somehow you manage to exhaust all your threats, you still have cards like Experimental Frenzy and Light Up the Stage, which kind of gives you a little more gas in the late game to be able to try to finish off your opponent. All right, and on the other end of the spectrum, let's take a look at Strasky's Mono Red Aggro. Pretty much similar, sim you, you, similar you, cards, you, one less Skewer, I believe. You know what, actually, I think they have the exact same deck, so I wouldn't be surprised if these two players maybe potentially even test it with each other because Legion Warboss is a card that you don't actually see a lot in the mono red aggro decks, but both players sporting one copy of Legion Warboss, one copy of Skewer Critics, and 18 mountains. All right, it looks like our players are almost ready to kick things off. Let's take a look at the B deck first before we head into the action. This is, of course, Andre Strasky's Esper Control. Very similar, no surprises here. In fact, this kind of confirms my initial thought in that these two players are just sharing identical lists. As you can see, some of the quirks, you have one copy of Syncopate that both players play, two copies of Negate, and of course the one copy of Mastermind's Acquisition. So I feel like both players are playing exact mirrors for both configurations of their decks. So it's gonna be a true test of skill. Now, we look at the sideboard again, it's the same <laughs> sideboard, but if you wanna just talk about the players here, you know, Alex Hain is, and a member of the Magic Pro League. He, he is an MPL member. However, Andre Strasky 
is no slouch himself. He's, no. he's one of the best players in the world. He has multiple Pro Tour top eights to his name. Now, he might have qualified. He might be a challenger. He qualified via Magic Gathering Arena by getting the top eight seed. However, again, one of the best players in the field. Certainly. So it's going to be a very interesting match to watch, especially knowing that your opponent is playing the exact same deck as you. Like, is there some sort of mind game that, or, uh, or like hesitation or anything like that? Like, going into this game, what do you have to do to like just compose yourself, knowing your opponent's playing the exact same deck that I am? Well, going into this, I think both players know that they're not going to have a significant skill edge against each other. Yeah. And obviously not a deck edge against each other because they're playing the same deck. So yeah. ultimately, I think they're just thinking, okay. Good draws, good draws, let's go, <laughs> die roll, let's go. Make sure I draw as little of my removal as possible and draw as much of my you know, interactive spells if I'm playing, for example, the Esper Control Mirror. All right, taking a look at the opening hand here for Alexander Hain. Two lands, Mortify, Negate, Thought Erasure. Thought Erasure, you want to see that in your opening hand usually, correct? Yeah, Thought Erasure is just you know the best hand disruption spell in the format, mm -hmm. relevant in all matchups. And on top of that, the Surveil 1 is very, very important, actually. Not only does it allow you to put multiple cards in your graveyard to allow you to flip search for Ascanta earlier, mm -hmm. it also just helps smooth out your draws. So very, very strong card. And if you look at that hand, very good against either matchup. You have some removal and hand disruption. Looking at the other hand now, we have three lands in hand and absorb. So a slightly slower start here. Uh, Teferi here of Dominaria obviously is a card you do want to see, but I'm not sure it's something that you want to see this early. Right, and this is really interesting. So if you look at this hand, you have Cry of the Carnarium, which is one of the best cards you can have against the aggressive matchups. Yeah. On top of that, you have kind of, but outside of that, the rest of your hand's a little bit slow. So you're going to have yeah. to lean really heavily on this Cry of the Carnarium. Now, it's really interesting because both players know that they're on Esper and Mono Red. So when you keep this hand without knowing what your opponent is mm. actually starting with, you have to kind of make this cal weird calculated decision and really try to figure out, you know, is this hand decent or reasonable against both decks? So we'll see shortly which opponent, or which competitor decides to mulligan or keep. Uh, what is your instinct here? Do you think both hands are keepable? I think both Depending hands are keepable. Matches. Of course, I think Alex would prefer another land in his hand. Mm -hmm. However, he does have access to that Dottie Razor. It does have Surveil 1, so he can look at the top of his deck. If he doesn't find a land, he can put that, onto, uh, he can put that into the graveyard, which would then give him a greater chance of finding that third land. All right, friends, before we kick off this game, we're going to head on over to a short commercial break, but don't go anywhere because we will be right back in this deciding round. Alex, super loud in your ear when they're talking to you. Don't hear them.
Welcome back. We are in the do or die decider between Alexander Hain and Andre Strusky, both starting off with their Esper decks. Now, tensions are running high because for whichever player doesn't advance here, it's unfortunately the end of the road for them. Yeah, definitely. A lot on the line. And both players with opening hands that, you know, have a mix of good cards for each matchup and not so good cards in each matchup. So we can take a look here at the hands here. And Alexander Hain choosing to keep the two-lander with that Thought Erasure in hand to hope to try to string together some lands. Strasky keeping as well with a slightly slower start, but with the Absorb in hand for any uh, turn four shenanigans such as Chemist's inside, perhaps. The nice thing about this matchup, or when you're playing against each other, is the moment your opponent plays their first land, you know exactly what matchup you're playing against. Because, of course, the other decks that these players submitted are the mono-red aggressive decks. Mono-red, yeah. Do you think they breathe a sigh of relief when they see, oh, no mountain gets a lava runner, I'm good? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on your hand, right? It depends on your yeah, opening. Definitely. So starting things off on both sides, getting the tap lands out, so shock lands out, sorry, and uh, deciding what to have a look at here. Thought Erasure did take a look at uh, Andre Strasky's hand, so uh, Hain now has all the information he needs to proceed, but Thought Erasure in the hand of Strasky now as well. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see when Strasky chooses to fire off this Thought Erasure. He can either do it now or wait later to try to set up this big turn, as we saw with Matt Nass, where he went Thought Erasure into Teferi. But it looks like he's firing it off now. It meets the negate because uh, Hain doesn't want the information in his hand being made known to Strasky. I think that's one of the most important things for this game, is like not letting your opponent know what's in your hand. Absolutely. That's, that's part of the dance when you play, have two control matchups going up against each other. The moment your opponent knows that you, for example, you don't have counter magic or ways to deal with your Teferi, that's when it's a lot easier to just jam your Teferi on turn five and yeah. not really have to worry about your opponent having something. And the thing is, it's very likely that Shrosky would have taken that negate anyways, so it just makes sense for, for Hain to just fire off that negate there. Chemist is inside now, digging through the library, Ooh. trying to find some more answers, and those are pretty good answers. Negate and absorb for Shrosky. Yeah, that, that's the good half of his deck that he wants to draw. Oh, yeah. Keys to this matchup are counter magic and all the hard draw spells. Nothing else really matters. You don't want cries, you don't want removal. That's all you want to be doing, with, of course, also hitting your land drops. So Teferi's now in a battle of you go back to the third spot in the deck. Thank you very much. And um, what, what, is the, what is the situation here? Now, are they just going to keep drawing Teferi's and keep tucking each other's Teferi's in, or...? Well, well, Strasky is looking in a really good position here because Alex Hain doesn't actually have a Rastus Contempt to deal with the onboard Teferi. Strasky is tapped out, but he, so this is the opportunity. This would be the window if Hain had a way to kill the Teferi to cast it, but he doesn't have it. So Strasky has to be really happy here that he's going to be able to untap with negate and absorb in hand with an active Teferi. And look at what he draws here on top of that. Thought Erasure means Erasure. that he can cast Thought Erasure, take up Teferi, and then untap his lands and still have negate and absorb up for the following turn. That's, that's big. So it's very drawing a card here for Strasky. He finds another chemist's insight. Thought Erasure is going to be played. Taking a peek into Hain's hand, sees the Mortify, the chemist's insight, and the Teferi. Binning the Teferi without much hesitation. Isolated Chapel also being binned via the Surveil. Yeah. Am I correct in saying that both decks only run one Braska's Contempt? Yes, they're, they are, I believe, playing the same list. So they are actually soft to opposing Planeswalkers mm -hmm. if it resolves. And I think their main game plan is to make sure that they have enough counter spells or hand disruption to deal with walkers. Also, keep in mind, Teferi can also be used to deal with opposing walkers. So yes. if, you, if your opponent plays a Teferi, you follow that up with your own Teferi and, and deal with theirs. That's another way to deal with an onboard Planeswalker. All right. Now both players sussing each other out. Chemist's Insight going to be cast again. Getting rid of the creature removal spells because, as we know, they don't do much in the mirror match here for control. Yeah, neither deck plays any creatures in the main deck. And that is a really, really strong benefit to playing the Esper Control deck because you now have a deck that just blanks all your opponent's removal, right? Yeah. Because most traditional constructed decks are going to be playing a mixture of creatures, removal spells, and what have you. And the Esper deck playing none means that uh, uh, you're just, you're just going to be such a huge favorite in certain matchups where they're just going to be having a bunch of cast downs in hand that don't do anything. Precisely that. Orcrise of the Canariums, Orcrise Rats. 
So again, another chemist is inside, digging into that library, finding search for his canter, as well as an isolated chapel. Yeah, and Trotsky firmly in the driver's seat here with negate plus absorbing hand, and that Teferi, now this is the third or fourth time that it's been activated, so it's gonna be, be it's gonna be extremely difficult for Alex Hain to come back from this. Hain with a thought erasure, taking a peek into that hand. Will we see a negate here? Might Keeping see an that. absorb here, because negate actually I think is a more valuable card. Mm -hmm. So if you can afford to fire up the absorb first and follow up with a negate later, I think it's just better because, like I said before, no creatures in the deck. So yeah. negate is just two mana counter target spell in this <laughs> matchup. <laughs> or counter target to fairy is in most cases, as we'll see here. Fairy getting dealt with with that negate. It's the bin. Teferi again, ticking up, finding his friend. Oh, and look, back up to Teferi here as well. <laughs> Trusky might look to just fire off a Chemistry's Insight here because he will be able to untap lands. I'm not sure he wants to play out a search for Ascanta knowing that Alex Hain has two copies of Mortify in hand. So he, so it's effectively not doing too much. I mean, you're kind of taxing Alex Hain's mana a little bit, but you might be better off just looking to play Chemistry's Insight and digging for Counter Magic or Hand Disruption for this matchup. Perhaps if a counter spell was in hand, might be a little bit more confident with the Search for his Canter. Right. Uh, the Mortifies will get used eventually, so let's see if Alex Hain decides to get rid of that Search for his Canter before it goes flippin' and does exactly that. Oh yeah, he absolutely has to get rid of that Search for his Canter because the combination of both Search plus Teferi means you're going to be drawing so many additional cards a turn because Teferi's plus ability not only draws you a card, it allows you to untap up to two lands. So what you can do is, if Search for Ascanta flips over, mm -hmm. activate Search for Ascanta on your main phase, end of turn, let that trigger resolve and activate it again on your opponent's turn. Cheeky. Very cheeky. I like it. So Chemist is in sight again, bending the cry for Carnarium. Cry of the Carnarium, and finding a negate and a Glacial Fortress. Teferi keeps digging through that library, finding hopefully some answers, but instead finding another land. A little unlucky there for Andre. Yeah, but he's, he still did at least find that one negate. So he does have access to a protection spell. He has the ability to negate either a Braska's Contempt or a Teferi that Alexei might draw. Camus is inside now on Hain's side, finding an Absorb and a Watery Grave. Drown Catacomb as well on the draw. Now Strutsky's taking a look in the graveyard here just to make sure, right, how many Teferis have I dealt with? How many more do I have to encounter here? Yeah, so this is a common thing that you're going to see in this really grindy slugfest mm. that we see here where the games go back and forth. Both players are exhausting all their resources. Because both players know the exact composition of their decks, you can start counting through all the relevant cards in the matchup. How many absorbs have you cast? How many negates have you cast? Okay, now I know that you only have two counter spells left in your deck, so I can play according to the information that I have. Exactly right. And the last thing either player wants to see if they have the Planeswalker down is the Vraska's Contempt, because that's currently the only thing that deals with Teferi, Fari, and Teferi himself. Right. Additionally, they have one extra card in Mastermind's Acquisition, which correct. presumably there is a card in the sideboard that could deal with Teferi. <laughs> Sideboards, of course, including the Unmoored Ego, Lyra Dawnbringer, Field of Ruin, Mirari, Conjecture, Deep Mystify. It's just one of everything. Oh, the yeah. Eldest Reborn is also another way to get rid of Planeswalker. Kaya, Ors of Usurper, now threatening to hit the board. Yeah, not going to do a whole lot here, as currently Strasky only has two cards exiled. Mm -hmm. So th there is no risk of this Kaya just all of a sudden getting Strasky for lethal. So what Ostrowski is really primarily looking to do here is tick up that Teferi, get it to the emblem, which is the minus eight. Once you get the emblem, every time you draw a card, you get to exile a permanent on the opposing side. So what he can do is get that emblem, prote protect the fairy with all the counter magic. Once you have the emblem, you can use the emblem to get that Kaya off the battlefield. There we go. I think as soon as we do head back to Strasky's turn, that's exactly what he's going to do. Yep. And Hain has decided, no, I will not give you the chance, good sir. I concede. Let's go to game two. Yeah, the writing is basically on the wall. I know the game is likely going to drag on for, for, you know, 10 more turns maybe, but if you just look at that board state, Strasky basically has a 99.99% chance to win that game. Precisely. Without finding the Vraska's Contempt or Mastermind's Acquisition to get that toolkit working for him, it's just unfortunately 
a no-win situation there for Hain. And uh, keeping in mind the time limits of the rounds, you don't want to sit there for too long. Absolutely. Because when you can advance to the next game. Yeah. Especially because if there is a game three and we see another Esper Control Mirror, you want to be able to finish that match on time. Definitely. So if you think you're extremely unlikely to win a slow matchup, you should concede so that you have a chance to be able to win the match in game three. All right, so going into game two, we're going to see the mono red mirror. So mulligan decisions are a lot easier now that these players really know what they're going to be going up against because, of course, you play the other deck that yes. you submitted. So it's <laughs> going to be two identical mirrors here. So opponents both keeping their hands. They're happy with them. We see fanatical firebrands. We see steamkins. We see lightning strikes. It's the stuff of nightmares for a lot of players in standard at the moment. Yeah, and Strasky with a hand that's really uh, susceptible uh, to Goblin Chain Roller, as you can see. Oh, yes. Double Viashino Pyromancer, Runaway Steamkin. And uh, so if Alex Hain is able to get one or two cards with this Chain Roller, that's going to swing the advantage bar hugely in his favor. You can see him hesitating here to put the Steamkin down, possibly because he knows his opponent is playing the exact same deck as him. So he knows about the Fanatical Firebrand, he knows about the Shocks, he right. knows about every other cheap removal spell basically so, in red. So this is, the, this is only something that Strasky can do when he's on the play. Specifically, if you're on the draw against the Mono Red Mirror, if you run at the Steamkin on turn two, it is just way, you're putting yourself way too vulnerable to your opponent playing a turn three Chain Whirler. Yes. But given that you're on the play, if you play it on turn two, you can follow that up with, the, with plays on turn three to make it so that your creature won't die. So that's why Strasky decided to go with that. And now he has a really important, uh, interesting decision to make. Does he just play out a Pyromancer? If he does, and Alex Hain plays Goblin Chain Whirler, the game is pretty close to over. Interesting to see what happens here. Perhaps the Gitu Lava Runner, the safer option, but in a competition like this, you can't really afford to play it safe. You right. have Espe to force your opponent to have it. Especially because Strasky just doesn't have the ideal start in this matchup. Pyromancer is not all that effective here. The creature, the body is pretty small. So you might just have to play the game in a way where you're just like, all right, if you got it, you got it. If you don't, yeah. you don't. But it looks like Strasky is looking to play around a turn three Chain Whirler. And I think Alex Hain is still pretty likely to run it out here because anytime you can get some value with the Chain Whirler, it's still quite strong. So. Definitely, especially while uh, Fanatical Firebrand is tapped. Exactly. He can't go blowing himself up to hit you in the face, which is always, you know, nice. Uh, Lightning Strike, though, can get rid of this Goblin Chain Whirler straight away. And I believe that will... not yet, not yet. One more not spell yet. for the Gitu Lava Runner. <laughs> one at a time, one at a time. He just wants to get in there, man. Yeah, and you, you know, we kind of saw a very similar hand that Alex Hain had in a Mono Red Mirror earlier, where mm -hmm. his hand was just a bunch of burn spells and that Experimental Frenzy. Yeah. So I think Hain is going to be playing out a very similar game plan here, where he's going to be looking to use his burn spells if he can, to get the creature, get creatures off the board before he runs out that experimental frenzy. So what he could do here is the mountain into what, lightning strike, into light up the stage possibly, just to try and get as many cards out of the hand as possible before the experimental frenzy hits the board. Yeah. Is he deciding to do it now? It, it, he is in a really awkward spot because everything in his hand just costs way too much, man. And look, All he's right. just going for the frenzy here. All right, so the frenzy, we are looking at the top of our deck and we can see that there is a runaway steamkin on top of Alex Haynes' library. So Alex Hain looking at the, for the top of his deck to provide him all of the answers. So Fanatical Firebrand into Lava Runner. That's not too One shabby. One card, two cards, three cards. Into another Lava four Runner. Four cards. And that land will stay there because you cannot play and two time lands out. per turn. <laughs> and timeout. Not today, Hain. Not today. All right. Keep in mind, though, there is also the out clause on the Experimental Frenzy. If at any point you decide your hand is just way too strong, you don't need cards off the top of your library anymore, you can pay four mana to sacrifice Experimental Frenzy to start running out the cards in your hand. Exactly right. So the Pyromancer, well, there's an option. There's choices here, right? The Goblin Chain Whirler, probably going to go on the offensive here. I think the Gitu Lava Runner will stay back just to uh, bounce off the other Gitu Lava Runner until such time as they're bigger. And as you can see here, Alex Haynes just going for the block sacrifice to deal one damage to Strasky because right now the only thing he's concerned about is preserving his life total. He's basically saying, look, I don't want you to burn me up because I know ultimately over time the Experimental Frenzy is going to get me so far ahead on cards, that's how I'm going to win this game. Exactly that. Card advantage plays a very important part in this mono-red matchup as well as the Esper Control matchup. So. 
Let's see what he finds off the top there. We find a Legion War Boss as Ooh, well as a shock. shock. Ooh -wee. That's probably getting rid of the Gitter Lava Runner, the tougher of the creatures. And that is a Wizard's Lightning, which is Can going cast. to dispatch of that oh, Goblin Chain Oh, wow. Chamber. This is this is a really, really strong sequence of spells wow. from Alex. Hey, look at this board. That he went from tapping out with an Experimental Frenzy with nothing on board to playing like six or seven spells. This in is two the power turns. of Experimental Frenzy. Holy moly. So the VF Shooter Pyromancer, Strosky's mindset now. Does he want to block or is he still maintaining, no, I will be aggressive? When I, does that shift start? It, it, it looks like Strosky's main game plan here is the burn you out plan. He's like, yeah. look, I know this is going to be really hard for me to race you with. It's extremely unlikely, but my plan here is to just attack, 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 and try to burn you out. And look at this. Pain is sacrificing Legion War Boss for a lowly Viashino Pyromancer because he's like, again, Frenzy on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. I don't need anything else on the battlefield. All I want to do is they had a high enough life total so you can't go something like Shock, Skewer, Skewer. Oh, here comes for the Lightning win. Strike, Viashino Pyromancer. There's another one on top for the next round. But you, it's on one, no, three. He is on three. So basically, any burn spell is, well, <laughs> I think Strasky might be in a bit of a pickle here. Yeah, I think this game is all but over. And you really got to see the, the true power. I mean, in a previous match, we saw the downside of Frenzy, right? If yeah. you hit some lands or you hit a Frenzy, it doesn't do a whole lot. But in this game, you really got to see the full power, the full potential of what a card like Experimental Frenzy yeah. can do. When Frenzy behaves, because sometimes it finds its other friends and, uh, yeah, just kind of stoles your, your game plan a little bit there. Oh, I love this. Little, oh. little style play here. He's going to sacrifice Experimental Frenzy, play a land, and can either use Lightning Strike or Wizard's Lightning for <laughs> lethal. The options are endless. Look at that hand. That, oh, wow. That's what you don't want to see on the other side of the board, that's for sure. Very, very well done there by Alex Hain. We are going to game three. Yeah. Now, you know a bit more about these players than I do. What is their preferred style of play? Are they more aggressive? Are they more controlly? What do you think we'll see here? Well, again, we're talking about two of the best players in the world, and they've had success with all kinds of different decks. Yeah. But if I were to say, you know, what Alex Hain is known for, I think he's one of the best control pilots in the world. All right. So that's kind of where he lives. He won his first Pro Tour Top 8 with a blue-white control deck. All right. And so that's something that he's known for. Strasky has had success with a wide variety of decks. He's played creature decks and everything in between. So um, I think going in, if Strasky might be a little bit concerned about, you know, kind of playing in Alex Haynes' wheelhouse of being a master of control, he, I could see him consider playing Mono Red. But we did see in the head-to-head -head where Alex Haynes went up against Matnas, where they had the same configurations, they both decided to play as for control. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happens in game three. Now don't forget, friends, this is, of course, the decider between these two players. One is going to advance the top 16, and one is unfortunately going home. So it's all on the line here at the Mythic Invitational at PAX East. Yeah. One million dollars, that's a lot of money. That is the biggest prize pool in Magic's history, just for those of you who weren't aware. And, uh, I'd, be, I'd be pretty surprised, actually, at this point, if one of the players decided to go for Mono Red, given that it seems like the general consensus between the top players is if you have uh, Esper Control and Mono Red, just play Esper Control for Game 3. All right, so looking at the opening hands here, we see Esper Control. Do we see an Esper Control mirror? Let's find out. Glacial Fortress, Drown, Catacomb, those aren't the two opening lands you want to see. It's a very slow start. And Esper Control, right? So it's the Esper Control mirror yet again. Both players are deciding that the control is the way to go. Yeah, but Alex Hain light on lands and two copies of Cry of the Carnarium. Not, not an ideal hand here. Not the best start there for Alex. And a third Cry Ooh. of the Carnarium. But Thought Erasure might help him out here a little bit. Right, but Strasky's hand has some redundancy. here. has multiple copies of Teferi along with Chemistry's Insight, and Strasky's hand is fantastic for this matchup. Chemistry's Insight, one of the most important cards early, and also, honestly, what you really want in the control matchup is to not miss a land drop until at least turn six or seven. And unfortunately, it looks like Alex might be missing a land drop here. No, there it is, I spoke too soon. Watery Grave on Strasky's side as well. Actually going for the Isolated Chapel here, just to get the camera's insights on Alex Haynes' end step. Oh, and look at this. Alex able to string back-to-back -back lands together here, which gives him the opportunity to cast Chemistry's Insight. There we go. 
Chemist's Insight now going to draw some goodness oh, in the negate and that. to Fairy Hero of Dominaria, as well as Netherland. Right, but Alex Hain, Alex Hain has six cards in hand, yeah. and Shrosky doesn't know about any of those cards. He does so not. So running out of Teferi could be a little bit risky here, because if the sequence goes, counter your Teferi, untap, play my own Teferi, that is really dangerous. But Shrosky going for it here with multiple copies of Teferi in hand. He's risking it for the biscuit. He doesn't care. He's like, I have two more of these guys. It's fine. So in response, the only thing Alex can do is go digging into his deck to try and find something. Yeah, and this this is a this is beautiful. That this is the power of playing main deck negate. Both players playing multiple copies of negate because that allows you to play Teferi, tick it up, untap two lands, and have the ability to protect your Teferi. And keep in mind, these players are only playing one copy of Raskus Contempt. So if Teferi resolves, it's really hard to get off the board. It's very difficult indeed. We see both players have thought Erasure in hand, so they can take a sneak peek if their opponent allows it. So Strasky taking a look to see three Cry of the Carnariums, two Mortifies, and a Thought Erasure. That is not the ideal hand right. that, that, that Alex would want at this point of the game. Yeah. Thought Erasure as well, binning something not super useful right now in the island. Yeah, and Strasky now taking control of this game here has, you know, up on cards, has the Teferi on the battlefield with the Chemister's Insight in the graveyard. If Strasky can find something like a negate here or an absorb, it's going to be extremely difficult for Alex to claw back into this. But it's not over till it's over, and Alex will hang on for dear life in this deciding matchup between these two excellent players. Alex Hain playing Chemist's Inside, getting rid of one of the creature removal spells. Drawing two cards with Jumpstart. Now, for our, our viewers who don't know what Jumpstart is, could you give us a brief explanation of why can I keep playing this card so many so times? So, Jumpstart is a mechanic from Guilds of Ravnica where you can choose to discard a card from your hand to cast a, the, the same spell in your graveyard again. You will, effect, you will exile the card that's in your graveyard, but this does allow you to trade in cards in your hand for a different effect that you might want that are attached to those Jumpstart spells. All right. So a Thought Erasure there, getting rid of one of the Teferi Hero of Dominarias. And the Chemist's Insight, getting rid of another Cry, for, cry of the Carnarium. And finding a few more lands there. Yeah, no counter magic Nothing from Nothing yeah. So, Kane could find a Vraska's Contempt or something along those lines, and finds a Teferi, and this is going to resolve. Yep, no stops there at all. Nothing in response from Strasky. This could be fun. Oh yeah, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, gonna... we're gonna see some Teferi minuses going up against each other here. It's time to play Bouncy Teferi. Yeah, Strasky drew a ton of cards, but most of them were lands. <laughs> so do I just put your Teferi back? Yep, I there think we go. so. <laughs> I think so. So we got some Teferis coming up here in the queue. <laughs> Last Teferi standing usually is the winner, so... Yeah, whoever finds their Vraskas first or their uh, counter spells. Look at Strasky, life total not very important in this no. matchup. So choosing the pay to two life. Not at all. No creatures. You don't have to worry too much about your life total. Just gonna see what you can find. And Halex Hain with just a handful of removal spells. Not gonna be doing a whole lot here. And knowing that Teferi is on top here. If Strasky can find a counter spell here, this game is Such was could be gonna pretty be locked big, up. But there is more to find. <clears throat> Excuse me, on the other side of the board there. Yeah, given Hain's hand of triple Mortify, very unlikely for Search Press Kanta to flip. However, Teferi is all you really need to kind of run away with the game. Exactly that. So Teferi's going to keep ticking up. But here comes <laughs> his friend on the other side of the board to put him right back into the... No, Doran comes this time. He's going upstairs oh. now, going plus one here. He's as he does know that Strasky has another Teferi in hand. True. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to go for the minus because Strasky can't... Oh, up here comes something that could be spicy. Mastermind's acquisition for Strasky. Now, what do you think he would go looking for in his sideboard? So a huge draw from Strasky. A card that we've seen these control players get frequently here is um, the Mirari Conjecture. However, given that Alex Hain has a bunch of Mortifice in hand, Mirari yeah. Conjecture might not be especially good here. No. Also, any creatures you might find, that's also just going to end up very dead. Right. Um, he can, he can also search for his deck, 
for the one Raskus Contempt. He and could. just cast that onto Teferi. A lot of different options. And this is probably one of the hardest decisions to make yeah. when playing this deck because you have so many options. Not only does Mastermind's Acquisition let you look through your 15-card sideboard, you can also use, you, uh, choose the option of looking through your deck for whatever answer you might need. Yeah. Both players only playing the one copy of the Mastermind's Acquisition, so this, is, this could be a pretty big turning point in this game. Might just result in Strasky hammering the final nails in the coffin. Let's find out. Yeah, so if he does get something like a Mirari Conjecture, he can still use it to get back a Counterspell from his graveyard. Yeah. And eat up one of the Absorbs in the game's hand. Let's see what he picks here. He could also go for Devious Cover-Up if he mm -hmm. just wants a Counterspell, because Devious Cover-Up al allows him to... Pick the duress there. Interesting. Wants to take a look in that hand. But he knows four of the cards in the hand. There's only one that he hasn't seen yet. Right. So Strasky deciding to get rid of the other Teferi by essentially sacrificing his own. All right. Using the minus three ability. J just, just wanting to peek, wanting to get perfect information here. Before playing out the other one. Right. But unfortunately, still no opening to play the search for his canter. What happened? Did the Teferi... We do have a judge call on the floor. Yeah. Strasky just wanting to check something quickly. We will continue with the action once this has been resolved. But even you can see here where Strasky has gone so far ahead on cards, but because the matchup has so many cards that don't do anything. Mm. I want to say cards like Cry to Carnarium, Mortify, of course, can get searched for his Kanta, but that's really the only target. Yeah. The games still sometimes get very drawn out. Yeah, but getting the Duress there was uh, pretty interesting because he had a lot of powerful options that he could have gone for there. I guess he just wanted to make exceptional, like, specifically sure that there was no way that the final Teferi in his hand would be countered. Right. Uh, because of you know, the, the removal that Hain does have in his hand for creatures and enchantments, the Mirari Conjecture would never stick. If right. I'm correct, you could play it and you'd be able to... You, the you first would, chapter You would, would get the first chapter, yeah. which would then allow you to get an instant from your graveyard to your hand. So yeah. even if Alex Hain chose to use Mortify on the Conjecture, he could still get a Counterspell back. Could have countered that, yes. Right. All right. He could have also chosen to just go for Devious Cover-Up because he has so much mana. Mm -hmm. Devious Cover-Up is a card that I've also seen as a one or two of sometimes in the main deck configurations, or I guess the, the, <laughs> the decks of some Esper Control decks as a way to recycle through your win conditions in these grindier matchups. Yeah. So just bear with us while we wait a little while to see what the delay is here, friends, but we'll be right back in the action momentarily. Just take a look at the board state as it is. And absolutely nothing on the board at the moment. No planeswalkers, no search for his canters. It's per barring the hands, it's, you know, it's pretty even so far. Guess it'll just depend who can get the Teferi to stick. And of course, the coast is clear for another Teferi here. And a uh, big draw there in yeah. Chemist's Insight. Chemist's Insight, excellent card draw. Oh, there's Kaya. Kaya's shown up to the party. Yeah. Hain did have a window there to draw something like a Mastermind's Acquisition to deal with that Teferi, yeah. or even Vraska's Contempt. All right. So in Strasky's hand, there's nothing really that he can use to deal with Kaya. And Kaya is going straight for that Mastermind's Acquisition, saying, nope, you will not get that back again. No Thank recycling. <laughs> no recycling. Teferi's just going to keep plussing, finding the other Teferi. Camera's is inside as well in the main phase, drawing some more cards. Strasky desperately looking for a way to close out this game. So going to be using the Chemist's Insight and also the Jumpstart effect here to try to find some counter magic. Using the Jumpstart to get rid of the creature removal spells, of course. And... Do you think he'd ever just, you know... Just Throw the Azkanta out there just to see what uh, what Hain did. 
<laughs> no, I don't really think that there's a big point to doing so because Mortify has literally no other targets in the matchup. Yeah. So it's just better to just wait, I think, if you can, unless you want to set up a turn where you want to tax Alex Haynes' mana. Let's say you're Fair. setting up a big turn which, where you want to resolve something else. Mm -hmm. You run out the Search Rest Canta, make it so Alex has to play a Mortify, and then maybe you can kind of try to use that to your advantage somehow, so, somewhere right. else. The Slotty Rager, though, will help at least a little bit, getting rid of one of those Mortifies. If Strasky can get rid of the second one, then Eskans is pretty, pretty free and clear to hit the board. Exactly, and this is why it makes sense to hold on to the Search for Eskanta. Cards like Negate, Absorb, or even th uh, Thought Erasure makes this so that as the game continues to go longer, Andre Strasky can eventually find a window to resolve Search. Now that he's drawn the second Search, and he knows that Alex Hain only has one Mortify, yeah. now he can run out one of the Searches in his hand. Is that a dead giveaway if he has to play the, uh, the Search for his counter, going like, yes, yeah. I have found the other one, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, it's one of these things <laughs> where there's like all these levels, and these player, Alex Hain probably is probably going to smirk and be like, oh, you have a second <laughs> one, don't you? You found it. Gosh darn it. So, here it comes. Do we see the Search for his counter, or do we see the Thought Erasure getting rid of... That's the only other card, right? The only other card he hasn't seen is that Mortify. Looks like he just no, wants to get yeah, that no, last yes, Mortify out of Alex Hain's hand. Yeah. Mortify out the way. Ooh. I think you're going to want to keep that Absorb. It does leave him without mana to play it this turn, though. Well, he can't draw it. He can't draw it yet anyways, this turn. So... All right, Hain with the fairy hero of Dominaria hitting the board. Strasky doesn't have any way to deal with either Planeswalker at the moment. Kai is going to keep ticking up. Teferi is going to put Strasky's Teferi back into his library. Yeah, so it, on a previous turn, we saw that Hain chose not to go for the minus on the Teferi. Mm -hmm. The reason why he did it this turn was because that Teferi was getting dangerously close oh, yeah. to... The minus eight ability. To, my, the, to the minus eight ability of the emblem, so Hain just cannot afford to do that because the first time somebody resolves that emblem, mm -hmm. the game is effectively over. All right, so Search for Kanta is on the board. Teferi joins yet again. This isn't a fight. And sending away the Teferi on the other side of the board of Alexander Hain. Yeah, and now Strasky continuing to build onto his lead. This Kaya is not is still pretty far away. I mean, Trotsky does have yeah. nine cards exiled currently. Yeah. So two. that Kaya can do nine damage. Two shots could do. What is her minus? Her she her, her minus, minus is cost? minus five. Minus five. All and right. you basically get to drain your opponent and deal damage to your opponent equal to the number of cards that are exiled. All right. So Kane deciding here. I'm gonna poop you in the snoot for nine. Thank you very much. And she's not an immediate threat again because she has to keep building up that loyalty to use that ability once more. Search for his counter here will flip. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind uh, on top of all of this is if the, t if the game does go to time, the winner of the match is the person with the higher life total. So Hain, by using that Kaya's ability, has a firm life advantage. Oh yeah. So Strasky does need to find a way <laughs> to close out this game before time is called. Exactly right. What is he? What is he aiming to do here? To uh, prevent Kaya from basically hitting him again, or from him losing any more life, or uh, what's his what's his out in the situation? Basically, what Andre needs to do is try to get to ferry to ultimate as quickly as possible. All right. That 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 is basically his window here. And look at this. He's gonna run out. A Teferi. It's going to Legend Rule the other Teferi, but the reason why he's doing this is because he wants to get Teferi to 8 as quickly as possible here. Because Kaya, in a few turns, is going to be able to use... Uh, you can use the minus 5 ability again, and that will be lethal. So let's see. It's a race now, essentially, between Teferi's ultimate and Kaya's. I, I bet Kaya would love to take Teferi down. I'm pretty sure she's, she's that kind of girl. <laughs> Like, hello, Mr. Planeswalker. Would you like to fight? And Andre, just with all the resources now here, has Kanta the Sunken Ruin on the battlefield with mana for multiple activations with that Teferi as well. So Andre can effectively be up three additional cards a turn with the permanence that he has. Oh. We still haven't seen the Vraska's Contempt, correct? We have not. So that we is still not. somewhere in the deck. They are hiding. 
Oh, and Akaya of his own for Strasky. And negated straight away. And I think. And met with another negate. Yeah, I think <laughs> Andre just wants to put the pressure on, especially because he's so far ahead. He just wants Kaya to resolve, get that drain activation going as quickly as possible because he still has that absorb in hand. Right. I think if he didn't have the second counter spell in hand, he might not have he, he might not have uh, fought for the Kaya. But given that he had both absorb and negate, he goes, okay, I want to end this game. I want to end this game. That that is my main objective here. I'm yes. so far ahead. I just want to make sure we fight for all of our spells, and I just want to make sure that I can get this to 38 as quickly as possible. All right, Hain does have the other Teferi Hero of Dominaria in hand. But I think it's just going to get absorbed here. Yep, it's going to get absorbed, and Andre is going to continue looking through his deck here. Not If you notice, that's only like seven or eight cards left that's in Strasky's deck. So that Vraska has to be in there somewhere. Vraska's right. content. Where are wow. you? Wow, and if you notice, Strasky oh, didn't no. even go for an Ascanta activation or cast the Chemist's Insight. Kaya plussing up on both sides of the board now. Exiling as many cards from the graveyard. So given that possible. given that Strasky has not been aggressive with finding spells, mm -hmm. this and given that Strasky doesn't have a counter spell in your hand, this does open the window for Hain to draw a Braska's Contempt here to be able to deal with that Teferi in play. Yes, because Teferi will be ultimating next turn if Hain cannot do anything about it. But that's an absorb. Off oh, yeah. as Kanta. So now, Strasky has this very, very close to locked up. But it's still going to take a very long time for him to actually try to finish it off. Kaya being, of course, his primary win condition here. So Strasky deciding which card do I want. And I want that Absorb. Thank you very much. I will counter a spell and gain life. Yeah, just, just doing math here because of that Kaya in play. Mm. He doesn't have any other Teferis in his deck, does he? So he can't sit tucking. Right. Or does he have one So match? he might need to wait to get to Teferi to nine before using the emblem. But keep in mind, Vraska's Contempt should still be in Strasky's deck, right? Yeah. And what what is it? One or two unknown cards left. So one of those cards is going to be a Vraska's Contempt. Hey, there, there it is. is. I was wondering when you'd show up, Vraska's Contempt. So, both Planeswalkers plussing up, exiling things from the graveyard. Goodbye, Teferi. And Alex Hain here, what does, he, what does he need to draw to help him out here? He needs to find that Vraska's Contempt. He does, but at this point, Strasky has been able to find that Absorb. Mm -hmm. So, it seems extremely unlikely, unless Hain still has Chemistry's Insights left in his deck, to find multiple ways to deal with Nebraska. For example, Thought Erasure into Nebraska's Content is a string of cards that he can maybe hope to find. There goes Kaya, Hain's current and only win condition. Teferi is just going to keep ticking up, and I think we might see an ultimate next turn, because if I were to guess, this search for his Kante is not going to hit the board. Well, I think what Strasky needs to do is actually wait one more turn because mm -hmm. you need to be able to use the Teferi to tuck itself. Although, yes. can he even put himself in that scenario here? How many cards does he have left? I'm not sure. Can Teferi actually go up to 11? To, no, no. It needs to go to 12 to tuck you itself? You need to be able to minus 3 to right, tuck. Right, you need yeah. to be able to minus 3. So, I wonder if his primary win condition at this point is Kaya. How many cards are in exile, I wonder? Because I don't think there are any more Teferis in Strasky's deck. I'm not done yet. So it's it just becomes it just fingers. becomes a question of how many cards are left in Strasky's deck. Ooh, it's getting close. I think Strasky I think I think it's possible Strasky might actually lose this game. He might not have enough. He's got five cards left in his library. Don't draw any more cards. Five <laughs> cards left in the library, two draw steps. With two pluses on the Teferi. No, Teferi needs to go to 12. I, do, I, he I don't think he to, has enough. He might have to tuck his Teferi sooner than he likes. No devious cover-up either. No... Uh... Right. And Kaya as well. Only only 10 cards exiled in Alex Hain's graveyard here. That's not going to do it. 
Kaya, there needs to be 27 cards exiled before Kaya is representing lethal here. But keep in mind, Strasky can use Kaya in back-to-back -back turns. Mm -hmm. Honey, that's what I do. If, you can get, if you can get Kaya to 10 and minus 5 twice and have both of those minuses be more than 13 damage. They're mm -hmm. both, if, if there's four, at least 14 cards exiled and Strasky activates the ultimate on Kaya twice, that would, be, that would be lethal. That would be 28 points of damage. All right. So exactly. So he's not that. going for the emblem. He's just going, going for the tuck. The, the correct play there because you don't right. want to deck yourself. It's not a good idea, friends. Watery grave out of the deck for Alexander Hain here. And I think I think Kaya is just going to seal the deal here. This is this is going to be shortly over. Exiling more cards. There we but go. There's no more cards to exile. There's, there's one more card <laughs> in the graveyard. So Hain, don't put things in the graveyard. <laughs> And as you saw in game one, Alex Hain conceded to give himself the opportunity. But of course, this is game three. This is it. This is the deciding match. This is it. Do or die. One of these players will advance to the top 16 players. Fighting it out for a prize of $250,000. Zakaya so is at 10 now. No Vraska's contempt for Alex. No way to get Kaya off this board. Three cards left in Strasky's library. Woo, this is tense. Yeah, at this point, Strasky just going through the motions here as he has multiple counter spells to protect Teferi. Mm -hmm. If Alice Hain did find a negate for the Teferi. And now oh. we get the minus. That's one. Wow. Oh. What was that? A, a 15, that was like 15 damage points ultimate. of damage. Oh, I'm drawing a land to the top for Hain. That unfortunately is not going to help him. And knowing that the cards are on the table, that is it. Wow. I've never actually seen Death by Kaya before. That was pretty good. Yeah, and I wow. mean, th th that is kind of the reason why you play the deck. A lot of these decks struggle to find ways to win. Yeah. Sure, you can go to Fairy and, and try to deck your opponents, but at the same time, having access to that one copy of Kaya means that you can make that process a lot quicker, especially in situations like this where you come really close to running out of time. Well, congratulations to both players. They played excellently, fighting their way for their spots in the top 16. And uh, yeah, that was... That was really, really intense there. I was so concerned that they were going to deck themselves. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. But of course, Teferi does have that minus three ability, meaning that you can always just put the Teferi back into the deck, continue to tick up Kaya, and use that as your way to win the match. All right. yeah. Now, if we had seen a mono red, mono red third game there, that obviously would have gone a lot quicker. Right. Um, but obviously, these players both preferring the Esper control. Do you think that's going to be the case for the rest of the week? Yeah, I, I think even if, for example, I was not an MPL player and I submitted Esper Control and I saw what the MPL players did, I'd be like, you know what, okay, this is probably correct. They're doing <laughs> it, so I should probably do it too. On the flip side, you could also go, well, man, those games were long. I don't know if I would have played it to the level of these players. In that case, you go, you know what, mono red, just get them. All right, Becca is standing by with Andre Strusky. Let's throw it to her right now. 